Man, I absolutely love beans in the day diffuser bars. And I know no one cares what I love. But a friend of mine saw these awesome LED pyramids and wanted to have some for him. But I of course refused because I'm no contractor, but I'm a content creator. Holy sh! And so I asked him to give me a new idea. So he tossed me this drawing and I said, yes, I can build it for 100 bucks. And then he stupidly handed me over the cash and here we are. This is going to be a one day build. So first I sketched the wall art in Fusion 360 and while designing, I realized I probably need a wooden structure in the back to hold the LED tubes in place and give the whole piece some strength. After I was satisfied with the mock-up, I went to the local hardware store and gathered all the parts I needed. Then I tested the LED diffusers. For this, I glued VS2815 LED strips onto the aluminum bag. By the way, these LED strips have redundant data pins and run with 12 volts, which is great for higher power applications like this one. Then I added a Wemos D1 Mini, cause I have still some leftovers here. As the whole system will be running with 12 volts, I have to use a step-down converter, which I glued directly onto the microcontroller and soldered the wires to it, because the microcontroller is running with 5 volts. This yielded a nice compact package. Afterwards, I connected the LEDs to pin D4, and as inputs I used a box standard 5.5mm barrel jack connector. The acrylic diffuser panel is just clicked into place. Bonus points for adding the included end caps. And as you can see, the LED light is nicely diffused. With the right kind of diffusion, you cannot spot individual pixels. You just see this blurred colors, which look perfect when they go into each other. Delicious. So with electronics done, we can go on with the project. I started with painting the wooden slats and screwing them together just with one big screw for every slat, which looked pretty decent. Then I added the metal clips for the LED diffuser bars, in which the bars are just get clicked in. Nice. After this, I soldered all the wires to the LED stripes, added hot glue to protect the solder joints, and added the acrylic diffuser shields which looked horrible because of the exposed wires. So I decided to fix this and drove to the local makerspace and laser cut a cover bar for the cables. We glued the cover together with some normal wood glue and remember, a laser cutted edge will always be black even if you take white painted wood like I did. So, after putting on the cover, it still looked awful. Because the slats were not parallel and my internal autism kicked in. So, I needed to make the slats parallel. For this I used a flat piece of aluminum. I measured and drilled holes for the individual slats and painted it white. This is the result. Finally, inner piece. Last but not least, I drilled the mounting holes in the back. And then for the most important task, the peel. Oh, it's finally done. So this is the final result. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it's pretty awesome. It turned out really good and I really like the color and the intensity and the luminosity. It's just perfect. Now I show you how you can control it. All you need is your smartphone. Because the chip has built-in Wi-Fi, it makes a Wi-Fi signal you can log into and there's the controls. So. I can now easily take my smartphone and then change the color as to a like. Maybe a blue? Yeah, why not? Maybe pink? Yeah, sure. So it's pretty awesome. Also, they are, I have a lot of presets which I can load. So like the breathing effect or a color change effect or this cool twinkle effect. So I know you want to see more of these fancy animations. So. Yeah, I will make more projects featuring WLED, which is the software I used, and these kind of LED tubes in all sorts of sh and shapes. So please, consider sharing and subscribing so I can grow my channel. So, time for those awesome B-roll shots, and I see you in the next one.